Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the Bible study um, this night and everything. And God is good. And I'm hoping that everyone is here. And so we're going to get on with it. Glad that you made it. I'm hoping that uh, Tyra Griffin, I hope that she's online with us uh, this evening. want to give her a special shout out and letting you know that you can do this. Okay. You can serve the Lord. You can walk with God. A shout out to Sister Brittany. You shout out to you. Hopefully uh, everything is going good on your end. A shout out to Sister Constance and family. And so we want to go ahead and get on with it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this Bible st study um, this evening. We give you praise, honor, and glory for the things that you are doing. Keep your hand on the making church, dear God. Dear Lord, I pray that you would uh, heal us, that you would touch us, that you would protect us from the things that we see and notice that are noticeable and the things that we do not see, dear Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, I want to go ahead and um, I'm not sure, I'm probably a little bit off, but there's nothing wrong with checking out Proverbs chapter 8. We want to check out Proverbs chapter 8 uh, once again, because I believe that it will be a blessing uh, to us and everything. And so, so let's let's see what we got. Proverbs chapter 8, and we're going to hit... We're going to hit verse one again. I believe we probably have already hit this, but this is some good stuff. I want to go back to it anyway. So let's check it out. It says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding putteth forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates at the entry of the city at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing fraud, that means crooked or perverse, in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, understandeth and write to them that find knowledge. Verse 10 says, Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Now, I want to check this out again. I want to go back to this. Number one, wisdom always speaks, brothers and sisters. Wisdom speaks every day. Every day, wisdom talks to us. But every day, we need to listen for wisdom and understanding. Every day, you can learn something. Matter of fact, there are days where everything goes wrong. And it seems like, but the thing is, that's the day of class. That's the way you got to look at it. You learn for you know, when one thing is happening after another thing, you are learning. You should be taking this day as a day of learning because life has a way of sitting you down. Life has a way of sitting you down. And we need to, and when life sits us down, we need to sit patiently as a student, ready and willing to learn, though we may be irritated. And brothers and sisters, I'm trying to help you tonight to bring you some game changers because God deals with us every day. The Lord deals with, with us every day from all kind of angles. And that's the reason why the word of the Lord tells us, doesn't it, don't they not cry? In other words, does, it, uh, does uh, wisdom speak to many every day? And understanding puts forth her voice, right? Understanding puts forth her voice. And when we are people who want that, want the understanding and we look for wisdom, it'll catch up to us. I was talk, talking to someone not too long ago, how that when you're driving your vehicle, 
and one of your headlights are out, you notice a whole bunch of other cars and trucks and things that have a headlight out also. But you know what's so funny? It's when both the lights are working properly, we don't see the other headlights that are out in the other vehicles. And I'm getting to something here. The reason why is we notice this is because it's happened to us. And the same thing is, and so now we are unintentionally looking for people who have headlights out like we have. And so therefore, what are you talking about, Pastor? Seekers are the ones that hear wisdom. Those who do not seek, those who do not look for it, they miss it. They are the ones that miss it. You have to be a seeker of that because what makes you seek out others who have one light out in the, on their car or on their truck is when it's happening to you. But when both lights are working, all of a sudden we don't notice as many. And so you have to be a seeker and a searcher of wisdom. In the word of God, in scripture, you look for God. You allow the Lord to speak to you. You are searching. And when you are walking about in your life, you are looking for answers. You are looking for wisdom constantly, constantly being a seeker. You're asking, you're, you're looking, you're knocking, and, and wisdom will come to you, brothers and sisters, and it is a promise. That's the way life works, right? And a lot of times, life holds on to all the answers. It holds on to all the answers. When we have a, and we'll get the answers when we have a reason to look for whatever it is that we're looking for, life will open up the answers to us. And that's just the way that it is. Well, uh, uh, I don't have it like you. You can have it like me and better. You got to look for wisdom because wisdom is everywhere. And brothers and sisters, the Bible is saying that nothing can be compared to wisdom. Nothing can be compared to it. Now, follow me because, see, the church here, is, we are all going through battles. All of us are going through struggles right now. Real talk. And the making bunch is really being hit by the devil, right? And those who are gold and those who are silver are going to stand in the fire. But those who are of corrupt hearts are going to be burnt up. In other words, they're going to wash out. In other words, they're going to be purged out of the making church. But the real deal will not get purged out. And God has been purging this church since COVID. And I'm bringing that out. Some may act like they're all holy, but now we're in the fire. And only those who are gold and silver are going to be able to stand in God's, um, in God's pot. So it's a somewhat of a, the Lord knows, a cleansing. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Follow me. Nothing can compare to wisdom. Verse 11 says, for wisdom is better than rubies. And are the things that may be desired, and, and, and all the things, I'm sorry, that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Let me read that again. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Listen, y'all. Nothing can compare to wisdom. Wisdom is priceless. And the person that has it, it stays with them in all their circumstances. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. It's one thing to go through trials as a fool, but it is another thing to go through trials as a wise person. Would you want to be a fool and go through hardship? Or would you rather be smart? 
Would you rather be wise and go through hardship? Because let me tell you something. You are going to go through hardship, whether, whether you are a fool or whether you're smart. And this is the reason why nothing can be compared to it because of the fact that wisdom sticks to us. Wisdom shows us how to keep things. Fools lose stuff. If you give a fool a million dollars, he'll be broke again. But you give a wise man a million dollars, he's going to increase it. If you take a million dollars from a wise man, he'll get it back again. But if you take a million dollars from a fool, he'll never get it again because he's not that. He's not worth it in thought. He's not worth it in heart because he is a fool. Fools are the ones who have the hardest times when they go through trials in comparison to someone who is wise. And again, the storm and the rain comes to all of us, but those who make it are those who are rich in wisdom and knowledge and understanding, not the material stuff, but rich in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the Lord. They are rich toward God. And when you're rich toward God, you will not falter no matter how hot the battle is because you have understanding. You can see through it. But fools can't see through nothing. Well, pastor, I'm that type of person. Well, wisdom says, come unto me, ye that are simple. Wisdom says, come unto me, those of you who acknowledge your foolishness. And I will give you wisdom and understanding. Seek me out. Seek me early in the morning. Pray. Walk with me. Get to know me. Read your Bible. Since we are guided by our thoughts, our future are guided. Our thoughts is uh, pretty much the predictor of what kind of future we're going to have. Get God thoughts on the inside. Get the mind of Christ, then you're going to have, you're going to wind up with a wonderful future. Read. Fools don't read. Fools are covetous and greedy. But a wise man knows how to get it. He don't have to be covetous and greedy because he has it up here. I'm trying to help y'all. You're going through a hard time. Don't be a fool going through it. You going through your trial making. Don't be a fool going through it. You sick. Don't be a fool in your sickness. Be wise. A fool will sit there and eat all these cookies and all these cakes. Knowing that they got COVID. What you doing eating cookies and cake? Wisdom says don't eat it. See, that's why you got to be smart. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I know I'm getting kind of preachy tonight, but you know something about the word of God. You know the word of God saves you time. A fool will go through for years the same old okie doke but a wise man will understand that thing. He will tackle it, overcome it, and it's done with. And you save time when you read. When you read the word of God. And also when you read books that inspire you, you save a lot of, un, uh, of, of time. But fools waste time. And their life is never better. And they go 10 15, 20, 30 years. Because they don't know how to fix anything. They, they, they just waste time. Time is precious. The Bible saves some years. 
books on with wisdom will save you some years. Starting at the bottom, when you start halfway up the ladder, why you what you doing starting at the bottom? There are things that will teach you how to start halfway up. <laughs> I got to work my way up. You got to get wisdom. Yes, nothing can be compared to it. It is priceless. Life is really hard on a fool when he or she goes through hard times, but life is not so bad when a wise person goes through hard times and the hard times don't last as long because he or she is wise. Famine or plenty, plenteous, sickness or health, poor or rich, up or down. Wisdom is what defends us and protects us and lifts us up when we have it. You got to have it. And how do you get it? You got to read and study and believe the material. You have to read in faith. Do not read in unbelief. You cannot get wisdom reading the word of God in unbelief. You cannot get wisdom reading the truth in unbelief because unbelief rejects truth. And now uh, unbelief has made a fool out of the person. Okay, don't read the truth with unbelief, the truth of any sort, because all truth is of the Lord. All truth is of the Lord, all of it. Now let's keep on going. Wisdom saves time, and by saving time, that means your days are lengthened because you're not running around in circles wasting time. Nothing compares to the health of wholesomeness of mind that wisdom brings to the soul. Proverbs chapter four, verse five, comma, verse seven says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Listen, that's the sobering scripture there. Proverbs four, verse five tells us that it is possible to forget wisdom. If you go from this country to another country, don't you know that you will forget a lot of English if you stay in another country long enough? You start picking up their culture. You start speaking in their language. All of a sudden, you will start to forget English. Though you've been speaking it for all these years, you will start forgetting it. What does that tell us? Humans are extremely forgetful. And what else does that? Guess what you are? You are a human. We are extremely forgetful. We so stinking forgetful. We could be walking with God, know the Lord in the reality, feel the presence of God speaking in tongues, the blood of Jesus all over us, and still lose out. We are extremely forgetful, and we need to know that. You could put your keys down one place, and next thing you know, you're looking for your keys. And it, where are your keys? Where you put them last. That's how forgetful we are, and we just set them down. So be warned that we can forget. We're doing good now because we're on the momentum uh, on a momentum of um of remembering God. That's why we are doing good now. We are saved right now because we are on a momentum of remembering God. We are on a momentum of remembering Jesus. We are on a momentum of remembering uh, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are on the momentum of remembering how we felt when the Lord touched our life. That's the reason why we are still saved, because we're still remembering. But the moment you forget is the moment you lose out. And let me tell you something tonight uh, that the Bible says, forget in, in Proverbs chapter four, verse five, it says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Don't decline from it, incline. Don't go away from it, incline your ear to the Lord. Verse seven says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy get, getting, get understanding. With all your gathering, all your gathering of knowledge, 
all your gathering of, of wisdom. Get understanding. And all you're getting, get understanding. And that's why he said in verse 12, I wisdom to well with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Imagine going through a battle like that. If we can find out knowledge of witty inventions, I'm talking about things in an invention is something that someone has created. And, and they're very witty because of the fact that it's something that's never been seen before. It's, it's got some skill to it. It's, it's like, wow. You know that you can be witty in the battle. You can create in the battle. Even in heart, because all creativity comes from the mind. As you're walking with God, as you're going through your situation, as you're dealing with things and life is tough, you can still create a circumstances, a circumstance of blessing even in the battle. You can and you got to believe the words that I'm saying, though it may seem like you cannot create it, but you can. If I could bring Sister Natalie out, Sister Natalie in her circumstance called my wife, hey, Tell me about that apple cider vinegar. She wasn't going to be a fool in her situation. She's creating something. Though I'm going through, I'm going to create. Though I'm going through, I'm going to ask the Lord to help me to figure it out. And it'll be a blessing for all of us to ask the Lord, help me to figure it out. Yes, I may need help from my brothers and sisters. Yes, I may, may need help from my family. But Lord, though I'm needing this help, I want to be the one that helped me more than anybody else. So help me, Lord, to figure this out. Help me to go through it, being creative, with uh, being resourceful, uh, making it happen, doing research, Knowing the proper things to eat, knowing the proper things that to to uh, to look for. Uh, God, help me. Allow, yes, Jesus, I want your presence on me, yes. But I want to go through this thing skillfully. All right, we want to. He gives us witty inventions, with wisdom dwells with prudence. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. Then he said this in verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and the arrogancy, and the evil way, and the fraud mouth do I hate. Wisdom says, I hate a fraud mouth. Wisdom, though we're going through what we're going through, still hates evil and pride and arrogancy. I'm still going to fear God. I'm still going to honor my Lord. And then he said, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. See, when you're, not, when you're a fool, you don't have any strength. You're weak in that area because there's, you don't understand, right? And we don't understand all things. Don't get me wrong. There are certain things I just don't know. And I'll be counted as one that's really uh, that lack wisdom. But what brings what makes a man smart is he got sense enough to ask for wisdom and ask for understanding in those areas that he's weak in. And you'll find it. Anyone can. Anyone can. It's an easy, hard road. That's what we just preached. It's an easy, hard road. Right. So the fear of the Lord, what do you mean by the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord, and when you fear God, to fear God means that you reverence the Lord. You respect him. You don't want to get on, you respect him to the level of, I don't want to get on the bad side of God. Fear. What this fear does, fear stops you. Fear hinders you from doing something, whatever it is, right? Fear is good if it is, if it is applied to something that is worthy of that type of an honor. 
And sometimes people fear the wrong things. They fear, they fear stuff that's created more than they fear God, right? There are people I read about in the Bible that fear God more than they fear the lion. They fear the Lord more than they fear the tigers. And so uh, these people were persecuted. They were persecuted. Daniel feared God more than he feared the lion. He did not give the lion the same respect that he gave God. Throw me in the lion's den. <laughs> because I fear God. Fearing God, when someone gets to a place where they can fear God more than anything else, then they'll be unmovable, no matter what persecution, no matter what comes their way, because they fear the Lord. And the fear of the Lord brings forth results. The result is what? To hate evil, because I understand that God, in whom I fear, hates evil. I understand uh, that God, in whom I fear, hates arrogancy. That's what it means by pride. Not being having pride in the way that you dress, and having pride in the way that you do your job. You need to have pride in that. But when, when a person is proud to the point where they are, uh, they think that it's all about them, that I am all that in a bag of potato chips, and they got that look like I am, and they walk with this walk, and they, they have a body language that's, uh, that shows no humility whatsoever. God hates that. He hates a proud look. Right, he hates a proud look. Where there's, or where there's, you know, God hates a proud look. You can't. You who likes to be around someone who is arrogant? You make you want to knock their block off naturally. Why? Because you're made in the image of God. That's why. You see a proud person walking around like they all that, it make you want to talk about them. You see this knucklehead. If I can buy him for what he's worth, <laughs> which is nothing, and sell him for what he think he's worth, I'll be rich. The fear of the Lord is to hate pride, evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the fraud mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am, I am understanding. I have strength. He says, by me kings reign. Kings reign by wisdom and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. That's a promise in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Here's the question tonight. What are you seeking? I mean, this is what I'm talking about. All day long, all day long, what have you been doing to seek wisdom? All day long, all day long, what have you been listening to? What have you been doing with your life today that displays that you seek wisdom early? When we see, he says, I love them that love me. Wisdom will love you back. And those that seek me early shall find me. Verse 18 says, riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and, and righteousness. Riches and honor, oh, that's with wisdom. Poverty is with fools. Dishonor is with fools. Right? Yea, durable riches and righteousness. But Reverend Davis, I'm poor, but I know a poor man who said... He was already rich when he was sleeping right there on the park benches uh, and when he was homeless. Because in his heart, wisdom came in his heart while he was poor. It did. And now it's just that he was rich before he got it. Because honor comes with wisdom. Blessings come with wisdom. Goodness comes with wisdom. Righteousness comes with wisdom. It's almost that time. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than, eat, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance 
and I will fill their treasures. Brothers and sisters, love yourself. Love yourself in a good way. Not in a bad way. You can love in a bad way. <laughs> I ain't saying be all proud, arrogant, and heady. But I'm saying love yourself enough to get connected to Jesus. Because Jesus has it all, y'all. I don't care what you're going through and you all are going through something. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus has it all. And some of us need to go back to the nursery song or the, the old song. He got the whole world in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. And he does for real. For real. Hey, guess what's going on tomorrow night? Church. Where? Online. We're going to have worship service online. So uh, looking forward to... Uh, to uh, the church service, and I hope this was a blessing. You can do it. Don't let this these uh, Bible studies intimidate you. The whole point is to push you to wanting wisdom and understanding because it will do something for you. Figure it out, y'all. Figure it out in the name of Jesus. Walk with God. You got this. You, was, you were made in the image of God. Do I have to sit here and tell you over and over again? You are a child of God. Remember that you are a child of God. Don't trip. You got this. May God. Let's dismiss in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the things that you've done. We appreciate you, dear Lord Jesus. Let us continue to walk with you and know you. And God, let us use our heads. Let us use our mind. Let us use let us use this thing that you have, this remarkable gift that you have given us, that very thing that's between our ears. And Lord, let us walk with you and be what you would have us to be, go where you would have us to go and say what you would have us to say in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless you real good.